video, we're going to learn how to make this um, checkered pochette, uh, wristlet pochette with a flip top closure. Okay, so the pattern that you need to make this wristlet is you need um, uh, 46 squares across by 50, uh, 48 squares this way. So 40, 46 squares across that way and 48 squares across this way. And the 48 squares breaks down to 21. And then you're going to go in four squares and then you're going to skip a square and you're going to cut up three squares across four squares and then repeat for the second half. So that's 21 and then you'll skip one, then you'll have four, skip one, and 21 again. And the supplies that you're going to need for this, of course, is uh, your plastic canvas. And this I actually have cut to the actual pattern. So you can see that I have the 21 across, skip one, then I have the four and it's three squares up skip one and 21 across that way and this side is 46 squares and to make oh and this um, canvas is one half um, uh, one half uh, centimeter in the dimensions for the squares so it's a very small square I will put a link to purchase this particular canvas uh, in the description um, the canvas is extremely hard to find, especially if you live in the United States. So I actually have it where you can uh, purchase it by the yard or um, fraction of yard, depending on what you need. So along with this, this is the main body of the bag. You'll also need a, a little bit uh, for the strap. And you can see that's just two squares across and it's 72 squares long in order to make the full length of the strap. So you'll need your plastic canvas, then you're going to need cord, and I'm going to use a seafoam green. This is a nylon cord, and I'll also be pairing that with a white cotton cord. And both of these are about one millimeter in thickness. You'll also, of course, need your crochet hook. This happens to be the one that I use most of the time. Um, it's anywhere from, um, E or an F hook works. Um, it's whatever size that you can get into your um, plastic canvas comfortably and actually hook the cord um, successfully. And you also need um, for uh, closure of the bag, you're going to need a, um, I use a little flip closure uh, metal silver metal closure. I will also put in the description um, a link to purchase that. Um, you'll also there's screws that come with it, so you'll need the screws to go with this closure. And you will need um, two small D rings. And once again, I'll put this description in the description um, a link to purchase those, along with a small lobster claw. Um, you'll also need, um, of course here is the screwdriver to go, a tiny little screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver, to go with your screws on the bag closure. You'll need a pair of scissors. You'll also need thread um, and a, uh, whoops, whoops. You need a small regular sewing needle. I can pick this one up, it's very tiny. A small regular sewing, um, sewing needle and also a um, larger yarn darning needle for your ends. I also like to use um, a little bit of super glue uh, on some of the ends. It can be any kind of super glue. Um, that helps the fray, uh, the um, cords from coming unknotted and having your, um, your project fall apart. So uh, one additional thing that I didn't mention is, but you will see this in the application of the um, crochet 
is with the canvas in order to hold it in position when you fold it up and put it together I use a little teeny piece of wood um, but you could use anything uh, something small enough to go into the hole of the canvas and hold the position of the bag securely until you get a few rounds um, of the pattern going and then it can stay in place itself so so let's get started with this project. Okay, to get started with this project, I take my uh, pattern, my uh, canvas, and I like to fold over the um, little corners or the edges of the side of the bag. Um, and then I fold across the top here turn it around and I'll do the same thing you'll see that it'll actually make the shape of the bag pretty evident and then I go across from uh, this extension here I fold that whole line that will be the very bottom edge of the bag all the way across to the other side and I turn it around I do the same thing Find that extension that you've snipped, you snipped off, fold right across there. Okay, so that will be the basic shape of your bag. And here those little wood pieces come into play. What I'm using is a little teeny piece of wooden um, cotton tipped applicators. Now I'm going to overlap two squares two from one side and two from the other side and then you take your little piece of wood go into both and you'll see that it's nice and secure and it's going to hold that side together i like to do the bottom too just because sometimes as the cord gets going it likes to pull the um the plastic out of shape a little bit so it doesn't matter which holes you choose, just the easiest ones you, for you to get into. Oops. Sometimes one side's easier than another. There we go. All right, so you can see that that is in place. Make sure all your little squares are lined up and then repeat the same thing on the opposite side. So that is the main shape of your bag. Now, the first color that you wanna start with is not your main color. Um, like I want the bag to have the sea foam, uh, the sea green be the main color of the bag. So, uh, and the white is an accent. So you always start with your accent color first. Okay, and just make your loop with your cord and you're going to skip the first three holes, the top three holes on the side of the bag. So you're gonna start on the side and I'm going to skip one, two, three. I'm gonna start in the fourth hole down, put my hook in, loop onto your cord, pull it through. And then you're going to work, always work on the angled holes, if you can see that in the camera. So always going to work to the next hole down but on an angle so you're put your hook into the next hole loop over pull through go into the next hole loop over pull through always keeping making sure that you're not going across you don't want to go across, or you also don't want to go straight down. You want to go from corner to corner. And you're going to keep doing that. Loop over, pull through, all the way to the bottom edge. Now I am using the cotton most of the time I actually use nylon, but I uh, just happened to have this cotton that was the right thickness. So um, 
you know, just like any cotton yarn, it, ten, it can shred a little bit and you can pull one cord because this I believe is two ply. So you go all the way down to this bottom edge and you know you're on the right edge when you see where you've made um, your corner here and that bottom edge goes straight across to the last row that you're going to do. And now you're going to turn the bag and go up in the opposite angle. So we just did this square right here and we're going to go up on an angle to the next square. The procedure is always the same. Turn and put your hook in, yarn over and pull through. In this row, you will continue. Um, this happens to be a count of 18 stitches because we started with, if you remember, we cut the pattern 21, skip one, then four, skip one and 21 again. So this is actually 21 and we skip the top three. So that leaves 18. So we're doing 18 stitches right here. The top three that we're leaving empty right now will be your trim. Okay, so we're going to again still leave the top three stitches unworked. Turn the bag and go back down. you're going to come across an intersection of your stitches the previous round that you've done so you should always uh, come to a square that actually has a stitch in it um, you don't ever want to come to where you're hopping over the row of stitches if you come to that you've gone off your diagonal um, and you need to go back and see which stitch you actually did sideways rather than um, diagonally. So here it's successful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the stitch. Um, the one millimeter cord um, sometimes can be a little tiny to be able to fit your um, your crochet hook right into the center of the, of the uh, stitch. So by going over the top, so as you can see, you've got where you can enter below the stitch, you could go into the stitch, you can go above the stitch. On this particular bag, I like to go above the stitch. It's just a little bit easier to um, maneuver and control. So as you can see, this is um, one time around, one complete um, pass of this white cord. So we finished up the last one. Okay, so you see that's one all the way around. It, that's one time. So now we're still keep going. So now I'm gonna have two rows 
um, I believe, uh, I think it's five, uh, five sets of up and down all the way around you're going to do. Um, but it doesn't matter however many number it is, you will eventually come around and you will end exactly where you started. Um, if you don't, <laughs> you have to go back and check your pattern because something is off because you will always come back after, I think it's four or five um, complete times around, you'll always come back to this spot. So we're gonna keep going with that um, and I'll get back to you once I've completed that to show you what to do next. So at this point, you've actually gone around four times and as you can see, it comes up with this nice little teeny square uh, pattern. And you, uh, right now I'm two st uh, stitches away from the top. So I'll do one and then I'm going to meet right up exactly where I started and same thing here. I'm going to take out my little markers here because I don't need them anymore. So that is not going to fall apart. So with this, now I want to, um, let me back this out just a little bit. There, that's a little bit better. Now I want to take uh, my loop and I'm going to put it to the inside of the bag. So I'm going to go into the stitch I just finished and grab the loop and pull it to the inside of the bag. Okay, and I'm going to go over just um, one hole. Okay, so one square. So you're moving from the square that you started to the square next to it and you are going to do the exact same thing all over again you're going to go up and down four times around um, this one I know I mentioned uh, in the first round that you were going to go into the stitch and if you hopped over a stitch you were going wrong well right now you're going to hop over the stitches that you've just done um, so we'll hop over that previous round and hop over again. Once you've gone around one time with this pass, then you're going to start intersecting with what you're currently doing again. And I'll show you how to handle that. Now here you're going to come across the intersection that you're going to hop over the first round that you did, but go into the top of the round that you're currently working. Um, you're going to go over that one. So in reality, you're going to have one stitch that goes over two stitches. Keep going and every time you come to that intersection you're going to do exactly that you're going to hop over and then go into the top of that square from the first the previous rounds um, stitch and you will keep doing this it will be four more times around first round this is the round we're working on so we're going to hop over that stitch and go on to above the round that we're working on so I'll let you keep going with that and I'll meet up with you again in a couple minutes so completing the second phase of the white, the last two stitches, uh, of course ending where I started this particular round. Again, I'm going to pull through, put my hook in from the inside, loop the cord, pull it in, and I'm going to just tie it off. And 
So there. That is the first round. I'm going to take my sea green. to start in the next hole. So that's the first one, this is the second one, now we're going to start the sea green in this hole. And we're going to go over the first stitch, we go in between, because we're always going to go, if there's a stitch in a square, we're always going to go over it. Next one we're hopping over. Okay, the next one we go into that square above that stitch. And then hop over above that stitch. And hop over and keep going round about. will be your main color of your wristlet pochette. So the same thing here, you're going to hop, uh, go over the top of that stitch, you're going to hop over that stitch, but again you're going to go on over above this stitch. So just as you did that first round, you are actually going to bridge two stitches on this round. So we can keep going, doing exactly that for four times around, and then we'll continue on to the second phase of the sea green. Coming up to the end of the first round of the sea green, the last two stitches. Finishing up in the exact spot that you started in. And just as you did with the white, we're going to insert the hook from the inside, pull the cord through to the inside, and go into the very next hole to start the next round. goes into the space between the two white stitches and we're hopping over those two and go into the space, hop over, space, hop over, space, we hook, there we go, and we keep going with this round. So once you've finished all uh, the rounds uh, with the green, you end up with this nice uh, checkerboard pattern um, and it gives you the picnic table um, gingham look, which is so cute. So when you finish the last stitch, you're not going to push through the other side. You're going to stay uh, this, this side and you're going to go around the entire perimeter of the bag, going in every single 
square all the way around. And in this first set of squares, um, you obviously have some stitches that are already into those blocks, um, but you are going to go around twice. So you're gonna do what I'm doing now, then you're actually going to continue and squeeze in another round uh, where the blocks that have every other block where it has a, a stitch already, it'll be extra tight, but um, you want it to look nice and neat. So we're gonna do all the way around the bag twice. When you come around for the last pass, um, you're going to uh, take your cord and pass it through to the inside to finish up that round. So we're going to go into the next stitch, the next uh, hole, and put your hook through, and pull through the loop. And then you're going to have the loop come up into the next row and you're going to continue and do two rows, uh, two rounds again. You'll do two rounds in this uh, row of, of squares and then you'll pass through and go to the second one from the top here and you're going to do two rounds there and um, then we'll do those and then I'll come back and show you what to do next. So once you've finished your three series of double times around, um, you're going to push the yarn to the inside of the bag and you're going to actually finish off your cord. So pull that tight. And give it a snip. that and now uh, we're going to make a spot for our clasp and the bag closure actually has needs a hole okay so you flip up the tab and you can see this one has a hole so we need to create um, a hole large enough in the bag to fit um, here. So, um, since this is, uh, we did 46 across when we cut our holes, uh, and then we overlapped by two on this end and two on this end, so we're going to subtract two. Uh, so there's 44 holes across one side uh, from, from end to end. So we want to divide that in half. So we'll count out 22 squares from where we started. So All right, so this one is 22 right here. So I'm going to use my scissors. I'm going to snip off that one. And I'm also going to snip off one on either side. So I'm actually cutting off three holes, three squares. And cut this here. Okay. And then I want to just clean up the points a little bit. Just give them an extra little snip. a little snip here and now you have a, an opening wide enough for the bag closure to fit and uh, be able to close properly and it'll give you a little bit of an adjustment for finding the exact center of the bag also so now we're going to take our cord again start it once more time one more time with the loop I'm 
going to start in this hole right at the top of the previous round that I just did and grab the loop and I'm going into the set of holes that we have not done the very top row. do a series of stitches across this top row all the way around to the other side and then I'll catch up with you to show you how we bridge across Now we're going to bridge across this vacant area. So I'm going to go into the very top of the row below. It's a very tight squeeze, but it fits. So there'll be five stitches here in this area. And then we're going to go into the top of the last row of squares. I'm gonna go in with a stitch. And I'm going to do a chain one. I'm going to go backwards into the top loop of the bottom of the stitch below. again one more time go down back into the stitch below grab the cord and pull up both loops I'm going to yarn over and pull through both loops so those who actually do crochet it's kind of like a reverse crochet or I think it's sometimes called a crab stitch so again you're gonna go into the stitch but in, in the next stitch in line, pull wrap yarn over, pull up a loop so you have two loops on the hook, yarn over again and pull through both stitches, uh, both loops on the hook. Because we're using small cord and tiny squares, it can be a little tight but you can get it in there, it, it certainly will fit. And you might notice that I actually crocheted right over that tail that I had from when we started. So the tail is inside um, these stitches because who likes weaving ends? God knows I don't. So um, I try to weave them in along the way as best I can. And of course, you're going to continue with this stitch all the way around to the other side. And once we get there, we're gonna meet up again and I'll show you how to bridge through to the other side. We have one more round to go on this uh, top trim. Now on the very last square of the top edge, we're not gonna do that reverse uh, crochet. I'm actually going to still go into that um, previous round top loop and I'm going to grab the cord and just pull it straight through. Oops. Okay. And then I'm going to go back into those five um, squares that we cut off and this makes it even harder than the first time but you can just fit the hook in there. I'm going to do another row of the single 
surface crochet stitches in those. So that makes several rows of cord that we have set into those little squares. And the very last one. There. Now we, as you can see um, by looking, we've got a gap and we need to fill that in. So we're going to do another round of um, the single crochet, surface crochet stitching in each of those. There we go. So in each of those, that voided area of the squares, we're going to do another whole round all the way around the whole bag. When we get to uh, the very last stitch, we're not going to go across a bridge. We're just going to fasten off right there. Okay, so now we finished that top edge. You can see I just have one tail sticking out. Uh, the nice thing about this pattern is the inside looks as good as the outside. Um, looks nice and neat. So now we have to do the bottom edge. All right, so we're gonna start with our Little loop again with our sea green. I'm going to go right into the very, very corner stitch, uh, the corner hole of the, bu the bottom of the bag. And go in there with the hook, pick up the loop of the cord, somewhere in there. to do single surface crochet stitches that we've been doing all the way around the perimeter, all the way around the whole entire outside row of squares. Stitch you started with. So that stitch actually gets two of them. So you've gone all the way around the perimeter. Now we're going to go to the next row all the way around. So we're going to go straight into that stitch. there and now we're going to do this whole row
When you get to the next corner, we want to make sure that there's no large open gaps in our bottom. So if we had just turned the corner like that, um, we're gonna have a big hole right there. So we're going to do like a side angle stitch. So we're gonna go back up into that um, stitch that's the, the hole that's in the very, very corner. Loop over, pull, oops. Loop over, pull it through. But I'm gonna lengthen that stitch a little bit. So you're gonna make the first part of the loop really short, and this part's going to be a bit longer. And you're going to go into the same square, the same um, square that you started. And yarn over and pull through. So you're gonna get a nice little angled um, corner and then continue to the next corner. Okay, now I'm in the next corner. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to go up to that corner square, yarn over, through, elongate that stitch a little bit so you're making the first half smaller, go back into the original, the original stitch, and pull out your loop. Okay, and continue this whole side. do the exact same thing on um, the next round as I did with these and then we're going to repeat another round um, to fill in the gaps. Okay so now you've got your um, all your corners done and you can see that I did the last one and uh, into the same stitch that I started in the same the hole that I started in. Now this particular round I'm going to do inside the round I already did, but the next round, I'm the next row, I'm going to do the outside of the round I did, and then the same thing with this third row because we're going to do um, another whole set. So we start with this stitch. It's a little tough to do and show you on camera exactly what I'm doing. Um, usually, I'm hugging the bag to my chest, which makes it impossible, absolutely impossible for you to see. Not that using this table is giving you any better view, but uh, you've been seeing how to do the 
the basic stitch long enough that you don't need to see that in action. But you can see that I'm working inside the, t the last round that I did. Okay, so I've gone up to where I crossed, went across on the previous round. I'm gonna to go to the stitch above that, the hole above that, I know I keep saying stitch, but the hole above that to do my next stitch. Okay, so you can see I went to the hole, this is where I crossed, and I went above that. Now I'll make the turn. staying on the inside of that previous round. End of this round, I went to the stitch, the, the hole above the stitches that I went across. I went to that one. Now I'm actually going to pull through the loop inside the bag to end this round. in the hole, have it grab the cord, try to wiggle its way into the inside of the bag. Okay. There. So that finishes off that corner. Now I'm going to go back inside the bag and grab the loop I'm going to go to the outside, not where this big hole is. I'm gonna to try to squeeze the hook from the inside of the bag into this side of that stitch. So I got the loop and I'm going to continue with the same procedure. Okay, so again, I had the last stitch go, it crosses over that bridge that we made and goes into the hole above the round that we just did. So we're going to go across. Across that bridge that we made. This is the last of that round. Now I'm going to have the loop go through that hole right there, the other side of this stitch. Oops, didn't mean to pull it 
it through. There we go. I'm gonna pull it through to the inside of the bag. And then the next round, we're going to start in this corner um, square and pull up that loop. And we'll go all the way around the outside of the bag. Okay, and once you've gone all the way around, we're going to insert the hook into that very corner stick uh, the hole and grab your cord and pull through to the other side and of course finish off when you snip this you want to snip it not all the way down to the very bottom of the bag because you don't want it to come untied and it's okay if there's a little bit of a tail on the inside of the bag, it's not gonna bother anybody. Um, so you don't even really have to worry about weaving in the ends, but snip it down to you know, just maybe two inches or so, three inches tops from uh, the, the ending. Um, so that's the inside of the bag. There's a little bit of a tail there. Um, so what I do at this point is I will take a little bit of my super glue and I will put a little bit on that bottom, the inside bottom, here it is over here, where we left off, put right, right at the junction where it intersected, intersected just drop is all you need. It will prevent um, the, um, the thread from unraveling. And then a little tiny spot right there. That is actually going to be hidden uh, underneath our clasp, but still it's a little safety feature. Also we'll see here um, I had a spot where I had where the cord had um, had a knot in the spool, so there's a little teeny knot right there. I want to put a little bit, just a tiny drop right there, so that it doesn't come untied. And then I will snip off that little bit of a tail that the, the knot left. It'll still be a tiny, tiny tail, but at least it's glued so it won't um, unravel. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make our, um, our strap. Okay, so the straps are super easy to do. I'm using my sea green, make a little loop. Start, I start on the bottom right-hand square of the two squares. going to do your single surface crochets all the way down the whole length of the strap. And compared to making an entire wristlet bag, the um, procedure for making the strap is super quick. When you get to the corner, turn, do a stitch there, turn and go up all the way to the other end. So once you get to the all the way to the other end, you're going to do one chain one and you're going to do a traditional single crochet going into the top loop of the previous stitch 
insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, pull through. So you're going to do this the entire length of this side. Now coming down to this final edge on this side, those who are used to traditional crochet know that in order to make a corner square, you do three crochets in the corner. So you're going to do one, two, three crochets into that corner stitch, and then the same thing in the next one. One, two, three. And then you're going to continue with your single crochets all the way across the top, three crochets in both of the corners, and then we'll meet up to show you what to do next. So now that you've finished with your three crochets in the corner, you're going to insert your hook into the first stitch on this side. You're going to grab your cord and pull through to the back. And then we're going to go into, there's a hole, there's actually two holes, and there's two holes down the other end too. We're going to go into this hole here and grab your cord, pull it through, and you can make it smaller. So now we're going to crochet, surface crochet, um, into this side. And then we're going to come around the other side and we're going to crochet in that side. So you kind of scooch that stitch out of the way. When you come down to the very last um, uh, square, we're going to insert the hook into one of those holes from the back side, grab the loop, pull it through. I'm going to switch over to this hole. So you get a nice clean transition there. And now we're going to go um, up the other side of the strap. And when you get down to the very end, to hook into the last hole that was made, pull it through, and tie it off. And there's your strap. And we'll put that together with our bag coming up next. So to finish the bag, you're going to um, attach to the strap um, one of the small lobster claws. Just bend over the end. Doesn't need to be uh, folded over a lot, just a little bit. And I have my cord, I have a knot at the end. And we're just gonna sew so it's secure.
put a D-ring on the other side. going to be flat side against the bag so we want to stitch this to the curved side stitches right up along the tight tight up along the uh, plastic canvas edge Thank you. 
Okay, and then this side of the strap with the D-ring. Same thing. Stitching it to this side. here so that it would stay and they could just carry it as a clutch. So there's a couple different options for the customer or for you if it's the bag is for you. Now the only thing we have left to do is the closure. And one thing I didn't um, show you in the um, introduction is that you'll also need a pair of needle nose pliers um, because these are originally designed for to be used for wallet closures. So we've got a cap at all four corners and we can't um, put that on the bag with the corners there. So we take the pliers, you can just bend those corners off pretty easily. doesn't leave any sort of sharp edges at all. super tiny. A little bit difficult to um, screw in half the time. This is what I recommend. Get the closures nice and tight. screws go right into these four holes and then there's four more in these four. When you screw it on you want to make sure that the um, metal is nice and snug up against the bag itself. You don't want there to be any gaps.
sure that I do. I have my metal plate with my brand name. And sewing needle and thread. And there you have it. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. And I'll see you next time.